Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, of course, I will be talking about the idea of transformers. Now, if you're not really familiar with transformer, well, this is the basic architecture. Uh, now, parts of the transformers are actually solely utilized in different types of algorithmic procedures such as GPT-3, uh, BERT related models that could do question answering and even do machine translation type of cases. So this is the basic idea of what that transformer model architecture looks like. And so if you are looking for an implementation styled video, I did attach two separate links, uh, one just goes more in depth as to you know how to actually apply a basic transformer based on this paper right here. Attention is all you need, a very instrumental paper for that matter. And also there's a GitHub repository, let me put myself over here. There's a GitHub repository where you can just go ahead and clone this uh, repository and you can just like pull this down to your local machine and follow along um, based on these specific steps. Uh, you start off with this basic English model, you pre-process your text using their uh, already pre-built uh, pre-processing scripts, train your model, test your model, and so on and so forth. So that's really all you would typically utilize uh, with this. So. Uh, this is primarily an explanation video as to what a transformer is. I'll be going into depth as to you know what the individual components are with an encoder and a decoder block. Uh, so let's go right down to it. So pretty much you can think of the transformer model as a successor for the recurrent neural network, the gated recurrent unit, and the long short term memory models just due to the efficacy and speed. Because primarily the authors who developed the transformer model uh, were constructing this model so uh, with the idea of parallelization in mind. Plug in, let's say the sentence, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, the RNN, GRUs, and the LSTMs will actually look at those words individually. And so each input has an individual word and it's very hard to contextualize and also to parallelize this process. The difference here is that the transformer actually just plugs out the entire sentence in. So make sure to like and subscribe, for instance. The transformer looks at the entire sentence individually and it can really parallelize this process, improving the speed and overall efficacy just due to the context embedding within the actual sentence and the actual vectors themselves. And then the paper use case uh, uses machine translation, uh, but the idea of transformers and parts of the transformers can be used for other cases, as I mentioned earlier. And just a fun fact, uh, did you know that just utilizing encoder blocks is actually just pretty much a BERT and just using the decoder blocks is pretty much just utilized for a GPT-3. So the left-hand side, this is an encoder block. The right-hand side, that is a decoder block. So we'll be doing a video on those uh, specific models in the future. So definitely stay tuned. All right, sweet. So let's go ahead and get started with the encoder blocks we have going here. That is a left-hand side, and this is what we have. So in layman's terms, the encode, what the encoder is trying to do is that it's trying to find a specific word in a sentence uh, and to try and find whichever one of those words has the most amount of weight behind it in terms of meaning and in terms of like if it's holding the sentence together in relation to other words in the given sentence. So with that in mind, uh, this is the architecture that we'll be following. So uh, the inputs, the very first one is think of this as a sentence that is your input and you're going to be splitting the sentence into individual words where each one of those words has a specific vector ID associated with that. And that is what you call the input embedding. Now note that it really depends on what type of uh, I suppose like what type of space that you are using with a specific NLP model. You could be using glove for instance, or you could be using a different NLP vocabulary, which might have a different vector ID with a given word. So uh, just keep that in mind when you are utilizing different vocabularies out there, there are different input embedding spaces that are out there. So with that in mind, once you convert all of your words into some vector value, uh, the next piece is the positional encoding. So you can think of this as the vector that adds context 
uh, with a given word in a sentence. Uh, that's essentially what it is doing here. So the actual equation or two equations that you could perhaps use is that, and that just came straight from the paper. Uh, and so this is a vector that you can add to your given word uh, embedding or your input embedding to add the additional context into there. And these are the parameters that are associated with that. So it's pretty much trying to get the actual position of the word in a sentence and trying to contextualize that. That's something that RNNs, GRUs, and LSTMs could not do, uh, trying to get that full context range. And that is what uh, this transformer here is trying to do. After the positional encoding, now comes the multi-head attention layer. Now, this is actually something very unique to this architecture and probably led to the, you know, the groundbreaking results that uh, the transformer models has been able to do. But the multi-head attention um, is trying to identify which word in the given sentence is most relevant to the other words in the same sentence. So you're trying to find whichever one of those words has the most weight. And within a given sentence, each specific word has a probability value and they all sum up to one. So using this as an example, let's say we have the sentence, make sure to like and subscribe. And after we go through the input embeddings and the positional encoding, add them up we have a specific value that will be outputted from the attention vector uh, or the multi-head attention vector, uh, which will be, let's say, 10%, 6%, 2%, 4%, 10%, 2%, 40%. So, and the idea behind the attention vector itself is that it focuses on each individual word. In this case, I just I uh, pointed out the like um, and what type of emphasis that had on it. And this is what one of those vectors will look like uh, when you focus on like. And you might have one, two, three, four, five, six. You might have six um, holistic vectors that you might be working with altogether. And in the end, you'll just be uh, concatenating after that. Um, so more information will be applied with the attention layer uh, later down in this video, but that is what this sort of does uh, high level, with a high level overview. Uh, then after that, we have the feed forward network after you actually normalize everything. And you can think of this as a fully connected network where the number of nodes is actually the number of outcomes that are possible. So if you're utilizing, let's say, the English language and you're trying to predict uh, the next English saying, there's what, like 3,000 words that are out there inside the English uh, language that are unique. And there just might be 3,000 connected uh, networks, or I should say nodes within that feed forward. And after the fully connected neural network, as we can see here, if we scroll up over here, it can either go to the, uh, the decoder code block, or it can go to another um, you can go to another encoder block and just repeat that process. So let's go ahead and check out the decoder block, which is down over here. And so this is pretty much the exact same idea. Uh, so similar main idea, except the only thing that is different is that you're plugging in your output. So this is your dependent variable on like what you're trying to predict. So let's say if you're trying to do machine translation, you have like, you know, uh, the English, English saying of hello, and then let's say hola, you know, within Spanish. And it's trying to decipher uh, what that hola meaning is within that given sentence. And it pretty much just follows that same general framework. So yeah, you do the exact same thing for your word embedding. So in this case, it's your output embedding, positional encoding. And then we have a, uh, a very similar form to the multi-head attention, but it's masked. And so the idea behind the masked value is that this is where the learning actually happens. So the masking term is that there are words within a given sentence. In this case, it'll be a given vector that are just set to zero. And the, the learning is the learning occurs when the model is trying to predict what those mask values are without those given uh, values or those given words within the actual vector itself. And this keeps on iterating for all the words within that given vector um, up to a certain n number of words that are actually within the vector itself. And that's pretty much what the mask multi-head attention step is doing at a very high level. Um, so 
After you do the masking, you literally just do the multi-head attention once more, and then you do the feed forward framework. And after the feed forward network, that's where your uh, the human interpretability can come into play. So we're gonna have a linear net, a linear layer, a softmax layer to get the output probabilities for a predicted word that might be outputted. Uh, and so right here, yeah, linear layer, number of nodes where n is determined. Uh, number of outcomes that are possible and then yeah just converts all of the values outside of the linear layer to a probability distribution which is finally interpreted by us or interpretable by us and you keep on doing this until there are no more words in your sentence slash inputs um, and you're done just iterating through and so yeah that was a lot so that's pretty much all you really need to know about the entire architecture now let's dive in a little bit deeper um as to what the attention vector architecture is because that's sort of like the brains behind this specific architecture as simple as it may be so let's go ahead and look at that so you can think of this, there are three different vectors that are associated with the attention vector architecture called them query, queue, uh, key, and value. These three are sort of just like assigned uh, to the vectors via the input space. And the weights that are assigned with these, they are actually trained or hypertuned via backpropagation. In terms of trying to understand these three values is that the query itself is the input word the key is the vector ID. You, you can think of that as a vector ID. And the value um, is the actual result, or the actual value of the key value pair. Uh, and that's like the actual memory in the model. And they can be the same values, of course. Uh, so the way that these are actually determined is a little bit, you know, uh, I guess hectic because it really depends on what type of uh, what type of UK use case that you're using. So if you're using GPT-3, uh, the text generator, um, typically the Q, K, and V comes from the same source, uh, otherwise known as self-attention. But if it's like a machine translation type of a task uh, where the paper actually went in depth on that, then the self-attention is first applied, then a K and V values come from a source sequence, and a Q comes from the target sequence. So you have your input and your output. Source sequence is your input. Your, um, your dependent variable is your target sequence. Sweet. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and, and see how that's actually calculated. And it's pretty much you just plug this into like one large equation, right? Um, but yeah, general idea is that you calculate the dog product between the query and key vector. You divide each of the results by the square root of the dimension of the key vector, pass the output from step two to a softmax function, squeezing the values between zero and one, calculate the dog product between the value vectors of the dot product of the softmax, uh, from step three and you add all the weights and the actual equation looks something like that the attention itself is qk and v softmax that and then voila those are your values and this is what the the scaled or like a really neat picture from the actual article itself and that's what it, it explains of what's ha sort of happening here with the QK and V values. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next one.